the first thing that we do is to search for MingeW on Google and go into the MingeW website. The reason we are doing this is to actually download the Fortran compiler and install it on our machine. Now go to the Downloads tab. On this page, you have to look for W64 Dev Kit. By clicking on W64 Dev Kit, I have to be redirected to the GitHub page of the W64 Dev Kit. Over there, I can go to the Release section. In the Releases section, I click on the latest release version and it will redirect me to the page in which I can download the W64 Dev Kit dash Fortran dash latest version dot zip. I download this zip file and extract it on my machine. Since I've already downloaded that zip file, I can extract it in some location on my machine. For example, I extract it in C drive. After the extraction has finished, I will go into the W64 dev kit and go into the BIM folder. And I have to add the path of that BIM folder to the path variable on my machine. This process is even explained in the W64 dev kit GitHub page. You can check the documentation for further details. So I open up the command prompt and inside the command prompt I type GCC and you see that I have it on my system. However, for the G Fortran, that is the Fortran compiler, as you can see, it's not installed on my system. So I go inside the BIM folder and look for the G Fortran compiler. So now I have to add this directory to the path on my machine. So I open up the start menu and type environment variables and go to the environment variable over here i select the path and after that click on new and paste the directory that i've copied and click ok and then again i click ok Now that I have added the G4 turn to the path, I open the command prompt again. Note that you have to close all the command prompts after adding the G4 turn to the path. So I type G4 turn dash dash version. As you can see, it gives me the version of the G4 turn. So it means that the G4 turn has been successfully added to the path. Now I create a folder, call it Fortran for beginners and inside this folder I open the VS code and create this Fortran source files inside this folder. Now I create the source file hello.f9t referring to the 1990 syntax standard for Fortran programming language. Now inside the source file I type program hello and end program hello which is the general Fortran program structure and type print star comma in the double quotation I type hello world. Now it's time to compile this source code. I type gfortran hello.f90-o which stands for output and the name of the output file which is hello. As you can see I can run this hello.exe. Congratulations you have compiled and run your first Fortran program. Now I go to the extensions tab of the VS Code editor and search for Fortran. Click on the modern Fortran which is the extension for Fortran that provides functionality like language server, debugging and etc. Then I install this extension. Instantly I get the syntax highlighting as you can see. I can hit control space on the print. But as you can see the language server seems to not work properly. And you might also get a pop-up saying that you, you've got to install the language server. You can click on install and go to the output tab. But in case you get the error message saying that you've got to install the Fort LS, which is Fortran language server manually, you've got to actually install Python on your machine. And after that, install the Fort LS via the pip. Because Fort LS or Fortran language server is a Python package. In the output tab, you can go to the language server server and check out whether the language server has been initialized or not. As you can see, we don't see any kind of message which confirms that the language server is initialized. Now if I type Python in the command prompt, you see that Python is not available on my machine. It means that I have to install Python. I open the browser and search for Python Windows. I click on Python releases for Windows and look for a Python version which is not the latest version because we don't want to actually face something which is not tested or 
maybe the fourth LS is not supporting the latest version. You can check that on its website. For the reasons I mentioned over here, I select the Python 3.11.5 and install it on my system. I've already downloaded this version and I just have to install it and click next, next. However, do not forget to check the option to add python.exe to the path. Also, I click on the disable path length limit and then I hit the close. So the Python is now installed on my system. I close the command prompt and even close the other command prompts which are open right now. After opening a new command prompt, I type Python. As, as you can see, the Python is installed on my system. I get the Python interpreter. Now I have to close the already open VS Code editor and reopen it again inside the Fortran for Beginners folder. If you again see the pop-up saying that install the Fortran language server, just click on install and see what happens. If the fourth LS is installed successfully, then you are ready to go. But if it's not installed successfully, you've got to open the command prompt and go to the output tab and go to the language server tab and verify whether the language server is working properly or not. If it is not working properly, you open the command prompt and type pip install fort ls and wait for the installation of the package. After the package has been installed successfully, you can verify whether the fort ls or fortran language server is working properly in the VS Code editor by, by closing the editor and reopening it in the same directory. Then you can click on the print keyword and hit control space. As you can see, the language server is giving you some information and you can go to the output tab and language server tab and see that the Fortran language server has been initialized. This means that the Fortran language server is working properly and you are ready to go for your Fortran programming journey. You can see I hit control space on the program keyword as an example and it gives me some information that program skeleton is like that. So all is good. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not lose future content on Fortran programming language. As always, I see you all later.